Hi hey everyone, I'm Josh Ring and I'm here to help you create better music, believe in yourself and share your gifts with others. Today I have a fun little thing I wanted to show you. It'll help you visualize music in a whole new way. It'll help with your intervals, your triads, your scales. It'll even help you find new colors as you're composing and arranging. And it'll help with symmetrical harmony too. So before we dive in, I wanted to share my free gift to you. This is my music theory survival guide. Wherever you are on your musical journey, I think you'll find it really helpful as you understand more and more about music theory. Just go to joshring.com slash free. It's my free gift to you. So let's dive in. All right, so we have what, what's here is known as the clock face. And so we have all 12 chromatic pitches that we could have within an octave. And you can see it looks just like a regular clock, all 12 moments that we could have in a normal clock. So if you can read a normal clock, you could read this quite easily. Uh, and it's very similar to a, a piano, except on a piano, we have like these black notes that show us where the half steps occur. And there are these places, say between the B and the C and the E and the F where there's just a half step, no black notes. Uh, but this helps us visualize it in a whole new way. So we're not stuck with those various shapes that we might have at the piano. So let me walk you through some ways that we could use this. So first, let's say I wanted like a, a major triad. So we'll just use a good old happy C major. Uh, and with this, we can see between the C and the E, right? If we count it up, there's one, two, three, and then there's four half steps, right? So four half steps is what gets us like our major third. Same kind of thing if we go from the E to the G, you might count up one, two, three. Okay, there's three half steps. And that is the same as then your minor third. So you can see then, the three half steps from the minor third and the four half steps from the major third, if we add those up together, those seven half steps are the same as what's known as the perfect fifth. And you can see that then the opposite of the perfect fifth would then be your perfect fourth. So that means there's only five half steps because there's 12 half steps total in this entire clock, right? So we can use it to understand major triads like this, but let's say we wanted to do like a, a minor triad instead. With our minor triad, we would just lower the third, right? We have our three half steps there, which would then be our now minor third, versus now the E flat to the G would now be our four half steps, being now our major third. So it's helpful for triads like this, but let's say we wanted to just deal with just straight up inversions of intervals. So say we have a C up to an A, which if we counted that up, we would get our you know, nine half steps, if we wanted to count it by half steps, which would of course be our major sixth. So then the inversion of that would have to be then the three half steps we have left. So there's our three half steps. So that's a minor third. So the inversion of your major sixth being your minor third. I hope you're finding this helpful. I just wanted to remind you, please do like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me spread the word to others so I can help as many people as possible. But one of the best uses of the clock face is when we get into symmetrical things like this. So here we have the tritone splitting our clock face directly down the middle, directly in half, cutting the octave in half. So this is our tritone. So I could find any other tritone just by cutting the octave directly in half, right? So directly across from the clock face, we have our tritone. So with this one, something we might do with this is say, well, we have D and say a G sharp in one chord or anharmonically, that would be the same as like a D and an A flat. So what might we do to find some chords that could fit with that? So a common thing we do is what's known as tritone subs. So I could fill out the seventh chord there. So with my D to A flat, I could fill out my seventh chord this way. So now I have the same D that they had and they now have the same G sharp or A flat. And so now I have these tritone subs. So if I wanted to use the E seven, I could, or if I wanted to use the B flat seven, I could. So a helpful way to deal with tritone substitution. The other nice thing, you ever notice that these tritones are, for the tritone subs are now a also a tritone apart. So you can see that really nicely on the clock face as being directly across from each other. What about say augmented triads? So here, a very common one, we have C, E, and G sharp being our uh, C's augmented. So we could do that with a plus sign, we could do C aug, or even like a C with a sharp five, right? All kind of common ways to notate an uh, augmented triad but it also could be the notes for an E augmented triad. So here, right, it could be E, G sharp, and technically B sharp, right? Or it could even be some type of like A flat augmented, right? So kind of three triads in one, right? Any of these notes could be the root, which means as we go through, 
So we could have the notes on D flat, F, and now A as another set of augmented triads. So we could have the D flat augmented, F augmented, or A augmented. If I keep going, I could have a D, an F sharp, and an A sharp. So you can see the pattern. Now I have my, what could be a D augmented, an F sharp, or G flat augmented, and an A sharp augmented. And you can see the fin finishing out the pattern. I could have my last set as being E flat augmented, G augmented, or now B augmented. So you can see really with augmented triads known as a symmetrical triad like this, there are really only four augmented triads that exist, right? So I have my first one in blue, my second one in orange, my third one in green, and now my fourth one in purple. So really there's only four augmented triads that exist. So, so let, next let's look at the fully diminished seventh chord. So here I could have a C fully diminished seven with C, E flat, G flat, and technically B double flat, or it could be like a, a D sharp, fully diminished seven, F sharp fully diminished seven, or even A fully diminished seven. You can see the pattern, right? Now I could have a C sharp, E, G, and B flat as a C sharp fully diminished seven, or it would be an E diminished seven, G diminished seven, or B flat diminished seven. All right, any of these notes could be root. Same last thing, you know, in green, we could have a D diminished seven, F diminished seven, G sharp diminished seven, or the good old B diminished seven. So you can see with fully diminished sevens, there's really only three of them that exist, right? Any of them could be the root. It makes them very powerful with how you might re resolve them. Another very common uh, kind of symmetrical scale here is what's known as the whole tone scale, where everything is whole steps from one note to the next. So there's one whole tone scale and then my other one here in orange, right? So basically I have a whole tone scale that has a C or I have a whole tone scale that has a C sharp. And really those are the only two options. So only two whole tone scales exist. And another fun one is say the octatonic scale, right? So octatonic scale is when I have the entire thing alternates half steps and whole steps as I go along. So I have these half steps and whole steps alternating to get us the octatonic scale. And some people do call this the diminished scale. The reason some people really like the diminished scale is you make them uh, alternate colors like this, you can see, oh, there's two different diminished chords I have, just a half step apart. So I have like the C diminished next to an orange, the C sharp diminished, right? Another fun thing with the octatonic scale, right? If you think of it in terms of scale degrees, right? I have C being the root for this particular one, but then this could be like a flat nine versus a sharp nine as it's D flat and D sharp. The E would be the third. This would be like with a sharp 11, the five, a regular sixth or 13th, however you want to think of it, and then a flat seven, right? So pretty close to a, kind of like a C7 with flat nine, sharp nine, sharp 11, and the sixth or 13th, however you want to think of it. And one last fun one, right here I have the C sus four. If instead this F was the root, this could be like an F sus two, right? So you can see really it's the same chord, just which one's going to be the root. Is it gonna be the F or the C? Besides exploring symmetrical harmony, like we've been doing, it's also incredibly helpful once you get past non tertian based harmony, non triadic harmony, and you start getting into a tonal music that uses pitch class sets. So something like this, each measure was his own pitch class set, you maybe have to find things like prime form, normal form, integral class of vectors, and the transposition or inversion relationship between them. So incredibly helpful to use the clock face once you are studying atonal or post-tonal music. Related to that, it's just incredibly fun to experiment with finding new colors. So with this, uh, sometimes we get uh, stuck in our same shapes that we might use on our guitar or the piano and just we, we're just stuck with the same sounds that we're always used to. So what you might do as you're exploring new harmonies is just even you could even roll the dice, just put on random things on the clock face, just try out new colors that are just completely different than maybe anything you've heard before. I'm just going along selecting random notes. Let's see, would this sound like anything? Let's try another one, just going around selecting random sounds. So what would this sound like? 
a completely different color than what maybe I'm used to. And as you're exploring color, don't just automatically assume it's going to be dissonant, right? You might have to try out some things just because the previous two were rather dissonant because of all those half steps. Let's say you just really needed a chord with like an A sharp in it. And so you could try to come up with something using the clock face and just to break free from maybe the normal sounds that you're, you're used to and just try to see what could you come up with that's maybe new and break the mold. So the main point of this is just trying out new colors, new sounds, breaking away from the common uh, triadic harmony that maybe you're used to if you're looking for new colors. All right, I hope that was helpful to you. Again, it's just a fun way to visualize music in a whole new way. Please let me know in the comments below what kind of things do you particularly enjoy using this clock phase? What might you do with it? So again, please go to joshring.com free for your free music theory survival guide. Thanks and have a great day.